Hello everyone, welcome to another segment of Intellectual Brainstorming and um, Academic uh, Excellence. My name is David Oni and uh, my YouTube channel is David Oni Ruiz, W I Z. Now, we want to wish you a happy new year. Welcome to the year 2022. And in this year, it promises to be what a big bang on the David Oni Ruiz channel on YouTube. Now, um, we want to use this medium to encourage you to subscribe to our channel, to click on the notification button. So whenever we come up with videos, new videos, you will get a notification. And also to leave your comments so that we can help you better. Um, this time, we're looking at what we call the political economy. Political economy. Political economy. Political economy. Now, political economy is an aspect under political science. And um, it has to do with uh, economic uh, relations as it relates to, uh, to production and the uh, exchange. Economic relations as it relates to, uh, to production and the uh, exchange. But um, in this topic, we're going to dive into three perspectives under political economy. If time permits us, we're going to take them one after the other so that I can be able to have an in-depth analysis of what the political economy is all about. It will help you a lot. Now, um, the word political economy was first used by the man called uh, Anton Anton de Montchretin in 1615. In 1615. So the word political economy, don't forget, was first used by this man, Anton de Montchretin in 1615. But political economy, as used by Anton um, de Montretien, has gone, has gone beyond that word, political economy. And that is why political economy is divided into three perspectives. We have what we call classical political economy, we have Marxian political economy, and the third one we have world, world system political economy. So there are three perspectives, classical political economy, then we have the Marxian political economy, then we have what we call the world system political economy or political perspective. Now, before we dive into this political economy, this perspective on political economy, let me quickly digress into what we call mercantilism. Mercantilism. Now, if you have been following my lectures, I actually lecture, lectured on what we call mercantilism. Mercantilism. And I said mercantilism was an economic concept that took place during the 16th to 18th century. During the 16th century to 18th century. However, mercantilism has now been replaced by what we call the uh, political economy. Political economy, which is classical, Marxian, and world system political economy. Now, when we are talking about mercantilism, we are talking about um, a system where gold and silver is used as 
the measurement of a country's uh, wealth. Gold and silver is used as a measurement of the country's uh, wealth. And also where protectionism is being used. Protectionism is being used. And you're talking about a system where export marks exceed the uh, imports. And you're talking about a system where Britain served as the major power at that time using his naval system to auto control trade at that time. So the system was monopolistic. So mercantilism was monopolistic. It was monopolistic in what in nature. And gold and silver was used as well as the measurement of the of a country's wealth. Going forward, mercantilism, you know, like other economic theories, became you know obsolete. And another economic theory or economic uh, system or economic, uh, you know, uh, theory came into force. And that theory was the political economy, which was divided into what into the classical, the modern, and what and the what is the political economy. Now, political economy, we're diving into it now. Now, let's look at what the first one we call a uh, classical political economy. Now, when you're talking about the classical political economy, it was an economy system that was, you know, that was active towards the late 18th century, 18th century to mid, mid 19th century. So, classical political economy system was popular during the late 18th century down to the 19th century. Now, the proponent or those that advocated this uh, system were Adam Smith. So, the proponent of a um, classical political economy were Adam Smith. Um, David Ricardo, David Ricardo, David Ricardo, we have John Stuart Mill, John Stuart Mill, we also have uh, Jim Baptist, Jim Baptist. and uh, Thomas Matos, Thomas uh, Matos. So these were the economists at that time that, you know, that wrote on the classical political economy. So class classical political economy was an economic system that was popular in Britain at that time, during the late 18th century down to the mid 19th century. And the theory was, you know, was postulated or supported by Adam Smith, David Ricardo, John Stuart Mill, John Baptist, and what and the Thomas uh, Up. Now, what is classical political economy talking about? The classical political economy was talking about, you know, um, an economic uh, theory that was based largely on production and the uh, exchange. So it was an economic system that postulated what that the the wealth of a nation should not be measured by gold. That the wealth of a nation should not be measured by gold, but by national income. By national income. Don't forget that when you talk about mercantilism, the wealth of a nation was measured by gold and the silver. But under classical political economy, the wealth of a nation, according to Adam Smith, should not be measured by gold, but rather by national income, 
by national income. And um, the national income should be based on what? On the division of labor and the use of what? Of accumulated uh, capital. Division of labor and the use of what? Of accumulated uh, capital. Division of labor and the use of uh, accumulated uh, capital. Division of labor and what? And then. Uh, accumulated uh, capital. So, what classical economy is talking about is that, uh, you know, production, productive processes and exchange should not be monopolistic, but rather it should encourage what we call uh, a free market economic uh, system. So, what mercantilism is saying here, I mean, what um, classical political economy is saying here is that the wealth of a nation should not be measured by, by gold, but by national income. And this national income should further be determined by what we call division of labor and accumulated uh, capital. And is not postulating that there should be a free market economic uh, system, a free market economic system as opposed to a monopolistic system that was postulated under mercantilism. So what he's saying here is that classical political economy should be a free market uh, system. So it is one against the uh, monopoly. It is one against the uh, monopoly. And also, it is also stressing the idea of competition, market uh, competition as against what a monopolistic uh, system that was adopted under mercantilism or mercantilism in the 16th to, or to the 18th uh, century. Don't forget that after it was after, you know, after mercantilism that the theory of what of classical political economy came up during the, what, during the 18th century, down late 18th century, down to, or to the mid 19th century. Uh, century. So, gold should not be used as a determinant of what of a uh, national income, but rather what should be used is what is the economic a uh, free market economy system where nation states can work, can compete uh, favorably as opposed to a monopolistic uh, system. Now, the the classical political economy became so popular when you know, nation states were moving out of what we call feudalism. Feudalism, they were moving out of feudalism down to what to capitalism. And at that time, industrial revolution was, you know, was it had a larger impact on the society. Industrial revolution. Industrial revolution. Now what do we mean by, you know, feudalism? When you're talking about feudalism, you're talking about an hierarchical ownership of land between the king and what and the serfs. At that time, the king owns the land, and the king can locate what the land to whosoever he was he desires to farm. And at the end of the day, this the so-called farmer or the so-called serf that will take over from the uh, that will take over the ownership of that land to plot plant plant on it. We give what a certain percentage what to the to the to the king at that time. So it was a feudalistic system. But however, as the world was revolving and was you know you know revolving and changing, the era of what of feudalism became obsolete as well. And we now move to what we call capitalism or a free market uh, economy system. And also, don't forget one of the reasons why feudalism you know became so obsolete was the industrial revolution that would have brought about changes to the society. So industrial revolution brought about well, changes to the society and also helped to abolish what we call slave trade at that time. Slave trade. So slave trade became it was irrelevant and became unpopular at that time as a result of what we call uh, industrial revolution. Industrial revolution. So Adam Smith in his book published in the year 16, 1716. 1716. About Adam Smith wrote a book that was titled 
In the year 1716, Adam Smith wrote a book titled Adam Smith. So his book was titled, you know, um, An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of Wealth of a Nation. Inquiry, inquiry into the nature and point to nature and causes of the wealth of nation of nations and causes of the wealth of nations. That book was actually published in the year 1716. It was actually published in the year 1716. And inquire into the world, into the causes, into the causes, I mean, into the nature and causes of the wealth of a nation, published in 19, I mean, 1716. In that inquiry into the, in, in that inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nation, Adam Smith was able to, you know, condemn what we call the uh, mercantilism, and he emphasized that nation state to go into what we call classical political economic uh, system, where there will be free trade and free international trade, international trade. And that was why one of his, you know, one of his predecessors, one of the people that also wrote book on that theory was the man called, uh, David, I mean, David Ricardo, who was able to talk about what we call comparative uh, advantage. Comparative advantage. That was one of his books. Comparative advantage. So what we're saying here is that Adam Smith, in the inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nation, you know, was able to analyze, you know, critically, objectively, and subjectively the advantages that nation state will gain when they adopt a classical economic system as against a mercantilist economic system. So, however, other theories after classical economic system came up, like the Keynesian theory, Keynesian theory, and another theory which was called the neo classical political economy or the marginalist economy. Marginalist political economy. Now, the marginalist political economy or the neo classical political economy. And the Keynesian political economy actually replaced the classical political economic system with time. Just like how political economy, mercantilist economy system was replaced by the classical political economy system that was postulated by Adam Smith. So Adam Smith, in his book, titled Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nature, I mean, 1716, laid the foundation for politi classical political economy. So his book that was published in 1716 laid the foundation for what we call a uh, classical political economic uh, system. So the classical political economic system is talking about a free market economic system. And that gold should not be used as the measurement of a country's wealth, but the country's wealth should be measured by, by its national income. And this national income can what can be emphasized or be what or be you know can be put into place through the world, through the productive process and the exchange. And this can also further be what be put into place when there is what we call, uh, which I mentioned here, division of labor, division of labor, and the uh, accumulated the uh, capital. So classical political economy along the line also died with a natural debt. But today they serve as what as a foundation of a uh, political economy. So in our subsequent class, we're going to look at what we call the Marxian political economic uh, system. The Marxian political economic uh, system. Um, once again, my name is David Oni, and my YouTube channel is what is David Oni Please try to subscribe to this channel. 
also leave your notification and leave your comment on how to serve you better. So we meet next time. Don't forget, what we have done today is what we call the classical political economic system that was postulated by Obama, Adam Smith, who was what? Who was the originator of the world uh, classical political economic system in his book titled what? The nature, I mean, the inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of a nation that was published in what? In the year 1716. And what classical political economy is talking about here is a free market uh, system, a free market uh, system, a free market system. And it's also opposing what we call the mercantilist uh, economic uh, system at that time, which ran from, which was presented through, through the period of 16th or to 18th uh, century. On this note, we're going to say goodbye. To meet next time again, thank you so much. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a click on the notification, and also leave your comment. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.